What's up fam, it's Creative Sav here and welcome to part 2 of the product animation tutorial series. So this is the second part of the tutorial series so make sure you have checked part 1 before you continue with this one. We covered a lot of the basics and introductory stuff in part 1. And before I forget, thanks very much to everyone that supported me on the last video, all the views, all the comments. I love you guys. And like I did in the first part of the video, if you check your description, you will see a list of timestamps. So you can jump to specific points of the tutorial. So today we are going to be moving on to the second shot and in this shot we are going to learn a concept called speed ramping. Speed ramping is a very popular concept in cinematography. You would see it in a lot of movies and TV shows, even commercials. It just looks very very cool when you do it right. So speed ramping is basically slowing down or speeding up your video to give it a very cool effect. It's something I use very often in some of my work. And also make sure to download the starter files, link is in the description. The blend file I'm using right now is accessible for free. Now let's get right into it. This is exactly where we stopped in the first tutorial. This is the first shot if you remember. Now we are moving to the second shot. Remember we created three collections. So let's just mute this one, disable it by clicking this and enabling shot 2. Remember we copy the bottles into the different shots. Um, let's make this rendered so we can see the rendered view. Great. And yeah, one important thing we need to do, if you remember from the first video, is making this camera the active camera. Because if we don't make this camera the active camera, if we change the position of the camera, we'll be affecting the first shot and that can mess things up. So click on this icon on that shot too to make this camera our active camera. So the camera we are looking at right now is true the camera too. In fact, let's rename it so we don't get confused. Camera 2. Yeah, so this is the camera we are looking through now. So the scene we are trying to recreate is a very simple setup. Not too much is going on here. So I think let's copy the plane, the background plane from the first video. So this plane, select this plane, Ctrl C and paste it in the second shot. Click on shot 2 and paste. Now you won't see any difference, just disable shot 1. You can see that we have our background now. So to create the floor plane, let's duplicate this plane. Shift D to duplicate. R, X, 90. Then move it forward in the Y axis. So it's just below our bottles. Let's look in orthographic view, just below. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now I think we need to change our camera perspective, our view of our camera. As you can see from this shot, we could see the top of the flat plane. So let's adjust our camera to be more of something like this. Remember how we did it? Just use the middle mouse button to adjust it, then hit Ctrl Alt 0 to change our camera view. Now make your adjustments GY to shift it backwards and G to pretty much arrange it. Keep doing that until you get the view you are looking for. Okay, I think this is great. Now let's add a material to this bottom plane. New material. Okay, okay, we duplicated it so they have the same material now. But we need to change that. When you duplicate an object in Blender, you copy its material. So when you change the material properties, it changes it in the original one. So what you have to do is to update it. To update it, click on this number. This number shows you how many copies of this material we have existing in this project. So when you click on it, you update to a new material, material 10. So this is our new material for this. So if we change this, it will affect the other material. So let's change the color to something that looks more like this. Now let's create these cylinders. Shift A to add a mesh cylinder. Now let's scale it a bit. We want to scale it on the X and Y axis, that's this way, but we don't want to scale it on the Z axis. To do that, hit S, Shift Z. So it will scale on every axis apart from the Z axis. So I think this is, uh, yeah, I think this is good. Now let's scale it on the Z axis to make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, something like this is good. Now let's raise it up, GZ, to bring it up a bit. Make sure it's not like penetrating the plane. 
Now right click on your cylinder and hit shade smooth. You'll find that there is a problem with this. It looks very weird. You can see it even in the render view. This is a problem with cylinders in Blender. It just looks weird. Even if you add a subdivision surface modifier, it still looks weird. And this is how you fix it. Go to your modifier properties and add an edge split modifier. Edge split and it will fix it immediately. Then add your subdivision surface later. Your subdivision surface should be under your edge split modifier. That would fix the weird problem that cylinders always have in Blender. Now we need to bevel this cylinder. If you notice, it has a very sharp edge. Like the edge is so sharp. Let's take it to render view. The edge is very sharp. So let's just add a bevel to it like we did in the first tutorial. So hit tab to go to edit mode. Now you want to select this ring, this top ring, the whole top of the cylinder. So hold Alt on your keyboard and click on this edge. Now to select the top ring. Now what you want to do is bevel it. So hit Ctrl B and drag and use your mouse scroll wheel to increase the number of segments. Something like this is enough. Wonderful. Now let's do it for the bottom part too. Alt click to select it. Ctrl B and bevel it a little bit. Yes. Now you can see that it looks a lot more natural. It's no longer as sharp as a knife. Okay. From here, what we're going to do is to duplicate this cylinder, Shift D on the X axis and raise it up. Now this new cylinder is smaller than this one. So we are going to reduce the scale. S Shift Z. Then we scale it downwards a bit. Um, I think this is good. Now let's increase it a bit. Something like this. Yeah. So we can see from the top view that they are basically concentric circles. They have the same center. Now let's create materials for these guys. Let's use the same material for the background for this top cylinder. So the background material is material 9. Let's use it for this top cylinder. Just click this drop down menu and click material 9. So it just assumes the same material. And this guy wants it to be, create a new material, wants it to be a little bit, just reduce the brightness a bit. Yeah. Now I want to make this material reflective. So reduce the roughness to about 0 0.2. And this one to 0 0.2. So it's a lot more reflective now. Okay, now what we want to do is to raise our bottles up because they are intersecting. We don't want that. So shift select the both of them. Hit one to go to your orthographic view and G Z. Well you will notice that this you will notice that these cylinders are not even touching. That's why you need your orthographic view. It shows you different perspectives. So bring this one down so they are pretty much touching then raise your bottles higher just at the point where it's almost intersecting yeah perfect i think we should increase the size of these circles make them a little bit wider s shift z now let's arrange our bottles the way it was in the shots go to your top view hitting seven now move this guy here and move this guy here. Hit R Z to rotate in the Z axis and hit 90. Now it's facing this direction. This is exactly what we want. Now I want to duplicate these guys. Duplicate this white bottle shift D on the X axis. So they line up and drop it somewhere here. It's facing the wrong direction now, so hit R Z 180 to rotate it, and let's do the same for this guy. Shift D on the Y axis, drop it here. R Z 180, wonderful. Now we have our shots looking very similar. See, we are almost there. Let's adjust our camera view. Hit zero to enter your camera view. G to move around, and make sure it's centered. This is why we have this rule of thirds so we can frame well so make sure it's pretty much in the center good 
Now to create the rotating effect that we saw in the video, we need to add an empty object and this empty is going to be controlling these four products. So shift A, add an empty plane axis somewhere in the middle. Now S to scale, so you can see it a lot more clearly. That's the only reason why we are scaling it. Now we want to parent this product to the empty so we can control it with the empty. That's pretty easy to do. Click on the product, shift click to select all of them. Now click on the empty last, like we learned in the last tutorial. Control P and object to parent it. Wonderful. Now when we move the empty, we'll be able to move all the objects. When we rotate the empty, it rotates everything. Perfect. That's exactly what we want because we want to rotate this empty on the Z axis. You see, we are not actually rotating this cylinders we are just rotating the product you know in 3d there's like a million ways to do one specific thing so this is just one way now that we have our scene all set up remember when we exported in part one we changed the timeline to 32 frames so let's increase that to 120 just change it here to 120 yeah so we have a lot of frames to work with now very quickly let's just work on the animation very quickly on the first frame frame one click on your empty then click I and rotation to create a keyframe for the rotation. Now let's go all the way to frame 100. Let's rotate it on the Z axis to about 600 degrees. So R Z 600. Enter. Now I and rotation to create another keyframe. Now you see that our animation is pretty much set. But this has no speed ramping. This is just basic Bezier interpolation like we talked about. It doesn't look half as cool as this. So to make our animation look as cool as we want, what we need to do is to mess with the keyframes using our graph editor. So let's change our timeline here to our graph editor. You see, as we talked about in part one, you might not see any of the keyframes. So what you would do is to select all by clicking A, then full stop. So it shows you the keyframe. Let's disable the X and the Y rotation. So we have just the Z rotation. So this is our curve. It goes from slow to fast to slow. The normal, general, basic one. What we want is for it to go from very fast to slow to very fast to slow to give that cool effect. So since it's going to start very fast, let's go to the first frame, duplicate it by hitting Shift D and raising it up to somewhere here. So it goes fast in the beginning, but we want it to go slow. So after about 40 frames let's say at 50 let's duplicate this again shift d now we don't want it to go that fast remember the more horizontal it is the slower the animation the more vertical it is the faster the animation now let's do that one more time let's duplicate this and make it a fast animation from 50 to 60 now it goes from fast to slow to fast now i want this last part to be slow so let's bring this guy down so it's a lot slower now without adjusting anything let's just see how it looks like yeah you can see it's going from fast to slow but it looks very weird like it pretty much stops at this point and we don't want that so let's adjust the handles these handles are looking very weird so let's just make them look as natural as possible these handles basically affect our animation if i raise it high the animation will go really fast then slow if i make it more horizontal it's going to go very slow if i make it 90 degrees to the vertical it's just going to be constant so we want to make it to be like a natural transition yeah so let's see how it looks like now okay so it's still stopping here so let's raise this guy up it's like it's not increasing the rotation enough so let's raise it up and see how it looks okay good that's what we want so we want this guy to go up because this wasn't fast enough we want it to be really fast yeah so this guy should go up gz we are basically adjusting our f curves to the point where we are happy with the animation that's basically it when you have done your basic animation and added your basic keyframes you just spend a lot of time adjusting your f curves to get exactly what you are looking for let's see how this looks now okay it's still stopping here the key is to make the entrance point 
when you are entering into the fast motion, you want to make it as smooth as possible. You want to make this point and this point to be a very smooth transition. So it just goes smoothly. Let's see how it looks. Now, in this shot, we have two sessions of slow mo. Now, I want the slow mo to happen for the first product and for the second product, the blue one and the white one. So, this whole portion should cover the first product, and this whole portion, this whole slow portion, should cover the second product. So, how we are going to do it is to adjust the height of this. So, we want this slow motion to start right as the product is entering into the frame, like somewhere here. We want it to get slow from somewhere here. I want it to be just this blue bottle. You don't want this other bottle to come in. So we are going to bring this keyframe down. That means that throughout this slow session, we are going to be seeing just this blue bottle. Then when it wants to get into the second bottle, it's going to move fast. Let's see how that looks. Great. Mm, wonderful. You can see how cool speed ramping looks just makes things look very dope now for the second session of slow-mo i don't know how i call it session we want the second product to show so let's raise this keyframe up and down to adjust it so you want the slow motion to start somewhere here this keyframe is showing you where the slow-mo starts remember this part is the slow-mo so from here you want it to start just about when the product was coming in then you want it to end this is the point where you want the slow motion to end this height so we have to reduce this guy to that height here so yeah we want just this white bottle to show throughout this slow mo session i think let's bring this one down a bit yeah so it gets fast from here let's see how that looks okay let's adjust this handle you can see that it started very fast then it became slow at this point we want it to become slow when the bottle is in the middle so let's adjust this curve yeah let's see how it looks oh that's so sweet like i'm just making sound because of how cool it looks yeah then boom now the cool thing is when you use this and you time it with the music mm, that's just perfect when you time this slow motion with the drops of the music, it just makes so much sense. Now, I think the way the animation ended, yeah, the camera went up. So let's add another speed session here. Let's duplicate this keyframe and raise it higher. That's just for the end part. You won't be seeing that part since the camera is going to go high. Now, if you look closely, you notice that the camera is also moving with the speed ramp. So as the animation is moving from fast to slow, the camera is also moving from fast to slow. We already have the product animation down. Now we have to make the camera animation match it. So I think this is keyframe 0, 10, 50, 60, 100. Okay, let's do that now. Select our camera. Now you want the camera to come closer as we are rotating because for this second product, the camera is too far away. So we want the camera to move close. So let's just add these keyframes. And now we're adding the keyframe for the Y location because we want the camera to be moving in the Y axis closer to the product. So hit I location for the camera. Then at frame 10, let's go back to our timeline. Then at frame 10, add another keyframe. Then at frame 50, add another keyframe. We just want to match the motion. We want the camera to move exactly the same way that our products were moving. Okay, good. Now we have similar looking keyframes. Now we just need to animate the camera. Go to your graph editor. Make sure you have just the Y location enabled. Now we can see that our curve is basically a straight line because our camera did not move at all. There's no animation there. So we are going to add it now and it's going to look very similar to the animation of this product so let's take our cursor here now raise this one high gy so it gets closer now i want it to get very close like move very fast 
I think the first keyframe should be a little bit down. Yeah. Let's see how that looks. Okay. You can see that the camera pulses forward. Yes. Then from here to here, I want it to be a gradual, slow push in. So GY and lift it high, just very slowly pushing. And repeat the whole fast motion one more time for this keyframe. Now at this point, we want to frame it in a way that the white bottle will be the point of attention. So at this point, we should get very close, very close to the bottle. So GY, yeah, I think this is close enough. So it goes really fast at this point. And then it goes slowly. So let's see how it looks. Oh, cool. Now we should probably raise these two keyframes upwards so that our fast motion matches each other. We want these two quick motions to look very similar. You see, perfect. We have done our speed ramping. Now let's adjust our handles because I see that this thing is looking weird. Let's adjust our handles so it is smoother animation. You don't want any sharp edges. Any sharp edge will make it very weird and G3 so yeah something like this okay now let's play that back perfect this is so nice <laughs> this is so nice okay I think in the end the camera whips upwards from here it whips upwards very quickly yeah so let's do that from here now we are going to be working with the Z location so enable this guy enable the Z location Where's the Z location? Just click on Z location and hit full stop and you'll find it. So this is the keyframe at this point. So what we want is for it to move upwards from here to here. So shift D to duplicate it, then move it upward. So you remember that at the end of the animation, the product moves very fast. So you also want the camera to move very fast upwards. Oh, good. Perfect. Now I think we should move this background plane upward so it doesn't look so weird. Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. Let's play it back. We want them to match but they are not matching yet. At this point we want our product to move fast. So as the camera is moving upwards we can see the product moving fast. So let's adjust this. So we want it to move fast from here. So let's shift this keyframe here and shift this guy here. Okay, wonderful. This is what we want. We want it to move fast as the camera is going up. Nice. You can see we have gotten our speed ramping effect and we did this very quickly and this is very, very nice. I would like you to use this in every single animation you are working on. It's going to give you a very, very cool look. Just doing a very simple animation and adding speed ramping would make it look very nice. Now I think that's basically all for animation, that was very fast compared to the last tutorial. So let's just copy the lighting from the first shot, disable the second shot, enable the first shot. Now I want to copy all these lights because I basically use the same light for all the shots. Usually if you have two different shots that are completely different, you should change the lighting but these are very similar shots. So let's copy all these area lights and this one, the point light. So I used shift to copy this one and I use control click to copy this one control C disable enable make sure you are clicking on shot 2 now paste it to paste the light you can see the difference that's pasted all the lights I think I'm going to move this point light it's not in the right position it should be right behind the product and it should be a lot higher than that you Z raise it up. Yeah, now let's watch. Okay, we, we can see the light on our background. You shouldn't be able to do that. Click on the background and take the roughness to maximum. Yeah, when it's very rough, that means you won't be able to see any reflection. But when you reduce the roughness, it's basically a mirror. So you can see the lights. That's not what we want. Okay, great. I think we have a very, very cool animation. 
okay so this part of the plane looks very weird it's because this light is stopping here we need to increase the height of this light to be somewhere here so at the point where the camera goes up we still have the light covering it here that should be seamless oh perfect that's very nice we have our animation done so if you notice there is also something happening here we have the depth of field effect so we can see that at this point the background is blurred out because there is a shallow depth of field it has a cinematic look so let's try to do that now click on your camera where is the camera and click on depth of field now it will ask us where we want to place the depth of field the more professional way is to use an empty and that's what i'm going to do now when you use an empty to target your depth of field that means you can rack focus you know in cinematography when you go from out of focus to in focus it's like a technique so you can do that here if you have an empty so let's create a new empty shift a empty plane arrows let's make it very very big let's rename it here to target um d o f target depth of field target now we know what this empty is so click on our camera again under the drop down for depth of field focus on object so we are going to focus on that target duf target yeah now let's change our f-stop to something like 0 0.5 to make the background a lot more blurry now make sure our depth of field target our focus object is directly at the front of our product so move it g y Move it until it's directly in front of the product. If you move it back, you would see that our product is out of focus. You can see if you move it forward, our product will be in focus. So you can use this to play with the focus. This is why it's good to have our depth of field attached to an empty object. So we can mess with it by moving the empty. So let's move the empty to just in front of the product. So you can see that we have our depth of field effect. You can see the background is blurred. Now this is perfect. Wonderful. Now let's export this. We already have our animation. This was very easy to do. If you were following, congratulations for making this because this is awesome. And yeah, if you finish this tutorial or any of my tutorials, I would love to see your work. So post it on Instagram and tag me at the creative self, at the creative self on Instagram. I would love to see your work. I would love to share your work. So do that. Now let's export. Remember, we called our first shot, first shot. So click on this icon and rename this one to second shot. Second shot. Still exporting as a video file. Make sure we have everything right. Our colors. Let's adjust our background color. It's not looking right. Let's make our background color to be a lot more of this kind of blue. Yeah, something like that. I think we are good to export now. To render control 12 and our animation will start rendering nice our animation is done and this is looking dope today you learned the concept of speed ramping and how to do it correctly using our f curves you can achieve very very incredible results with this simple concept and i hope you try it out thank you very much for listening I have a part three coming up and in part three we'll be focusing on this last shot and this is the most complex we are going to be using bezier curves and messing with some very very cool things so i would catch you there but for now please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this or if you just like to see my face please subscribe until then i'll catch you later stay awesome guys peace